Hey, Sea Wolf Community, Chancellor Sandine here with another segment of Ask a UAA Expert. Take a look. Uh, my name is Moussin Gatabi. I am an Associate Professor of Economics at the Institute of Social and Economic Research at the University of Alaska Anchorage. And today I'll be talking about the economic consequences of the pandemic on the state economy and the state budget. Are restaurants a big part of the Alaska economy? So restaurants represent a really important part of the Alaska economy. Uh, as of March of 2019, there were about 1,400 establishments that served food and or drinks in Alaska. Those employ about 20,000 people. Now, the reason that matters is not just the number of employees or the hundred and some million dollars in wages that they earn, but because of the pandemic, now there are these mandated closures, which means that a significant portion of those 20,000 employees will be laid off over the upcoming weeks and or months. And so while obviously one of the most important things right now is to think about the public health consequences of the pandemic. There are gonna be significant economic consequences as well. And thinking about the size of the restaurant industry is a big part of it because that potentially tells us what are the things that we need to do as far as unemployment insurance, what should the state do, what should federal government do, and how will those workers potentially fare now that they're gonna be missing paychecks for the next few weeks. What effects will the expected decline in tourism have on Alaska? So the tourism industry is a significant engine in the Alaska economy because there are thousands of people every year that spend considerable dollars in Alaska communities through uh, cruise ships, or air travel. Now, as a result of the pandemic, there is considerable uncertainty surrounding the actual number of visitors. Now, that matters a great deal because we don't know how much money will flow into Alaska. Now, that affects the economy uh, uh, statewide because there are about 15 or 16,000 jobs that get added over the summer just because of the additional tourists. Additionally, there are a number of communities that rely significantly on sales taxes and bet taxes that are directly associated with that increased traffic. How do declines in oil prices and the stock market affect the budget deficit going forward? Yeah, the state is in a really precarious place right now because in addition to the short-term economic impact from these clo closures, the state will potentially miss out on a significant tourism, in, a tourism uh, season and then the state budget is very, very dependent on oil revenues and since the passage of Senate Bill 26 on the performance of the permanent fund. The stock market's declining, oil prices are declining, which means that the two largest sources of revenue for the state are both being hit really hard. We were expecting about a one and a half billion dollar deficit this year, even in the absence of these shocks. So going forward, the state will have to think very carefully about either adding revenues through levying taxes, drawing from savings, and the difficulty there is that while the state does have the permanent fund, the earnings reserve specifically, it does not have as much money in there as it once did. And so there are gonna be some choices that will need to be made very quickly about how the state will continue financing its operations. What are the potential consequences from the fiscal stimulus, in particular, the checks that people will be receiving over the next few weeks to help them deal with the layoffs? Yeah, so there is this 
very significant fiscal stimulus, uh, around $1 trillion that's been proposed. And a big part of the stimulus is sending checks directly to people. Uh, there will be, it's a means tested program, meaning not everybody's gonna get money. So the Warren Buffetts of the world will not be receiving a check. However, this is one way of essentially allowing people to have direct access to cash, especially in light of the fact that a number of Americans, a large number of Americans will be missing paychecks. And so this stimulus goes directly into people's bank accounts. It's based on 2018 uh, uh, tax returns. And so once people get it, the hope is they'll start spending it. They'll be able to pay bills because obviously those will still need to be paid. And because people will be missing those paychecks, now this is an opportunity to uh, stimulate economic activity. One last point is that in addition to the paychecks that will be going directly to people, there are very, very significant stimulus packages that will be going to, towards small businesses in order to help them maintain people on the payroll rather than laying them off. And so there is help that's going directly to households in the form of checks so that they can pay bills. And then there is help that's going directly to businesses, small businesses in particular, to hopefully incentivize them to not lay people off and actually keep them on the rolls while we're, we're dealing with the pandemic.